Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to lesson seven, uh, which I actually added, by the way. Um, I didn't have it before this one, but I think it's very important. I didn't cover it completely. So I'm going to do this one, which is jungle tracking. So jungle tracking is honestly one of the most important things in the game, whether you're jungler, laner, it actually doesn't matter. Like if you track the jungle, you can save lives. Saving lives is less deaths. Less deaths is more elo, okay? So I'll be talking about these things, which are the ward level one conditions, see if they're leashed, Jungle types, matchups, gang timers, jungle CS, wave states, and jungle respawn timers, okay? My goal is to help you climb faster with my videos. Check out my Patreon where I upload coaching sessions, courses, and live classes that has helped multiple players climb to high elo, including Challenger. Or book a private coaching with me on my website. So every single game, what is omega important is to make sure that these things are being tracked, okay? You might wonder, okay, how do you do these things, right? I have a real game example here where I can elaborate. So we start with the ward level one conditions. So very often, if you play against any jungler, you really want to know where he's going to be starting. If you want to know where he starts, the best way to do it is by, well, if you can, which is ward level one, right? And you have more options than that, which is that if you have, let's say, a ranged top laner at Jace against, I don't know, let's say a Garen, okay? The Jays can usually around minute 120 just walk up from topside and check the enemy blue buff and see if he's actually on it and you can actually harass them. If enemy is two melee champs, you can even just harass them and delay the enemy clear. So that's like one way, right? If you're like ranged top laner, they can like late invade and just harass them and spot the enemy jungler. And if he's not showing topside, that means he's for sure starting bot side. So the other option is like warding level one after minute one because if you ward, let's say at 50 seconds, enemy can base and buy sweeper and their solo laners might get level two from it. So that is highly not recommended. So usually after minute one, it's usually too late for him to base and sweep it, okay? And I'll give you an example here how I do it. And remember as well that if you want to go for ward, let's say right here in the river, and they have like, I don't know, Ezreal, Carmen, or Poke, and you are kind of afraid of face checking, or let's say you just have a strong level one, you can always walk through mid lane here and put a ward down here as well. This is what I do if I feel like I can't go through the bush here, which is that I just walk through here and put down a ward. And one thing as well, this... Ward actually didn't see me. If you walk around the corner here, and if no one's covering, no one sees you. I'll just show you the enemy perspective. Where, basically, I put on a ward minute one, right, as you saw. And this is where the enemy is, like, at. And basically, if I pause right now, and I go to my perspective, you see there's a ward here. So this is something you can do as well. So, a lot of options as well, of course. If you're winning, right, make sure you don't ward alone. Make sure you ping your laners to move. And then walk in because you don't want to get chunked. And if your lanes are there, you might you might actually get a free chunk or a free kill. Okay, so always ask for resources well if you're gonna go through the river pathing. So there's like other things that you can do, right? Which is that let's say for some reason you didn't put a ward down, which is completely fine. Some games you might forget, and I do this well, right? Which is that you have to pay attention to if they're getting a leash. So let's say Bolin is coming super late and they use some mana or they tanked for some reason one hit. You know very likely that you start bot side, and currently people are not doing fake leashes. So you can expect the start bot side, okay? So you can look at it as well. So let's say I'm playing Lily on farming here. I'm just looking at minimap. Okay, wait. Did I use any mana? Nope, didn't. I don't know where it started. All right? So you can keep in mind as well those things to know... So like at level 1 already, where is it going to be starting? And there's like so many ways to do it. So even if you can do it level 1, your laner, let's say if he's mid lane push, you can just push two waves in and put a ward raptors and you can still find him. This is what usually people do in competitive if they're not putting wards on level 1 because people are covering 5 men, let's say, okay? The other thing that you should know where he starts is going to be jungle types. So let's say it's a Kane, right? I mean, honestly, 90% of the time, Kane players are going to start at Raptors or they're going to jump over the wall here and try to take your Raptors. So you have to be aware of what the enemy champion does, their identity. Like a Kane will start Raptors, you usually path, start from Raptors and path towards opposite side, right? Um, a Rexa usually won't start on red buff. So you can take three camps and look for a gank. And you have to identify what type of champion is it and what is likely their pathing gonna be. So let's say top lane is Orn against Sign, okay? I and bot lane is Ezra Karma against Jin Karma. I'm pretty sure if bot lane is that volatile, he is gonna be pathing towards the bot side. So you should be keeping in mind as well what's the high probability chance, where is he gonna be pathing, and knowing the matchups is gonna help you basically know what is very likely for him to do. So after you've analyzed basically the ward condition level one. Thief the least, jungle type, and matchups. The next most important thing is gank timer. So, how do you guys actually think about when can a jungler be around mid lane and when can a jungler be around side lane? 
it, it depends, of course, on which journal it is, right? And if they get leashed or not, but most journals are actually pretty similar. This game, for example, right? What time do you actually think that Rexa could be mid lane or that I could be mid lane or Rex down side lane, right? And usually around mid lane, journals in general are finishing the camps at 228, okay? So it usually takes around seven seconds to walk from mid lane, sorry, from camp to mid lane. So I'll just show you. So look. I finish my camp around 228 and Look, Rex as well finishes the camp around 229 ish, okay? So 228 to 30 ish. So it usually takes 5 seconds to 7 seconds to walk to mid lane, as you can see. So around this time, Rex and me could both be mid lane. So you might wonder well, what's the side lane time, right? It's usually around 245 ish. That's if you do solo or most champs. If you get a leash, it's minus 5 seconds. So if you're playing mid lane or any other lane, you can think about the timers and be like, okay, around this time, enemy jungler might be here or uh, he might not be. And as you can see, Rex is sprinting towards top side. He's there around 2.48. So this is just purely gank timers, okay? And one thing that's important as well, like let's say Rex is just gank top lane here, okay? You look at his CS. He has 12 CS. That means that, well, he only took 3 camps. In this case, it might be obvious. But let's say he ganked at 3.10 and he has 16 CS. Uh, which means that he probably took, let's say, blue or Gromp, whatever. That means that he still has 2 camps left on top side or his golems is up and he didn't take his golems. So... You should know as well by counting CS, like how many camps he still has to take as well. Uh, so the next thing is, um, you want to make sure as well that once you know basically the general CS, gang timers, the most important thing, okay, which can be applied everywhere, any single time, okay, is that wave states. So with wave states, it's more like what the enemy sees. So I'll show you my POV, okay. So I see, because of my ward, I see the Rex is tower boss side. So he has three options. He can gank bot, he can gank mid, he can gank top, slash invade. Okay, four options, I guess, right? But if, let's say for some reason, I didn't have any wards at all, okay? I didn't know that he didn't start here. I should know that jungles usually be finishing the camps around 228. So the moment enemy is level 3, what I do, especially if it's a Rexa, I look at bowling wave. Okay, how's bowling wave? If I wouldn't see him, honestly, I would ping on bowling here. Hey, careful, Rexa might gank from behind. Play safe. I look at mid lane wave, well, this guy's flash, his wave's okay, I don't think he can die unless he misplays. I look at top lane wave, oh shit, that's a slow push. So, not this wave, right? I mean, unless he hard pushes this wave instantly, then he's gonna be fine. But if he's gonna slow push this, next wave, no matter what, this guy will need help. So, here, I went for a mid lane gank, right? And as I went for a gank, I actually didn't ping my top laner. I just went for a gank, I just did what I, you know, I saw a mid lane gank, but I didn't ping my top laner at all. And if I actually tracked them properly, right, knowing that, well, I saw him on bot side and I see bot lane's fine, very likely he's gonna path towards top side here, because bot he can't do anything. And if I look at the top lane wave, I would know that he can definitely look for a top lane gank around 245. And here, because I was busy doing my own thing, I didn't ping him to be careful or ping Rexa, because my react I'm pretty sure is a ward still, right? Yeah, he has a ward. So, I mean, he could put a ward here and Rexa could still gank from behind. But my point is that you, as a jungler, need to as well ping where he can be and the best way to ping is ping in his fucking face but he, he's like focusing on minions okay he's trading or whatever if you ping like hey carefully stop side he might actually not see it i'm sure some of you guys if you play lane or whatever right if you're fighting or trading or whatever you actually don't see the pings that are like far away so you're not focused on that if you get a ping in your laning phase at your minion in your face for sure the guy's gonna see it and be aware oh wait i should not dash in if i dash in and if rex is here i will die right but if he does dash in He's dead. But if he holds his dash, he should never be able to die against Rexa Garen with flash up. Right? But here, I'm not pinging him and he's just going in and around 2.45, that's the timer where he can get ganked. So by just me simply pinging once, right, he would probably not dash in and he would know that Rexa is around and he would probably survive. Rexai fills the top lane gank, his game is really open. Even if his wave is bad, right, as a Rexai, if you can't get a kill and you're oinking a lot around, usually the game is going to become pretty difficult. Because now it's going to become really predictable. So this wave state, you can do this in early game, in mid game, you can do it every single time. And that's basically how you can track the enemy jungler consistently. And let's say Rexa didn't go for gank at all, okay? Let's say every lane was playing perfect, pixel perfect. Usually camps are respawning around 420. If people start Raptor solo, it's around 4 minutes. But you can usually expect 420. So let's say, you know, Rexa started bot the top. You can expect them on both sides around like four four minutes already. Because let's say after full clear, um, like 410, he'll full clear, sprint the bot. So as a general, what you can do, if enemy general didn't gank, 
around 4 10 4 minutes depending on Jonah of course as well and if it takes a crap or not you can know really that he's probably gonna be around that side and you can look at the waves and see how the wave condition is so let's say this is like 4 10 and you see the waves like this so now it's 340 let's say it's 4 10 okay this wave here is really not good so usually laners need to push out this wave right let's say nothing happened here and the wave is like this and this is a bit smaller and um, they might get ganked from rex side just by looking at waves you can see what the enemy sees like that's really important like this is what the enemy sees. Imagine Rex is here ganking. He sees his wave is bad. They need to push it out. It's a perfect gank angle for him. By identifying all of these things, which is... I'll just show you my sticky notes. There you go. You'll be able to know what the enemy drone can do. And this is going to become a lot easier. That's why pinging, warding, and knowing the matchups, gank timers, all of these things are so important. And what you can do to improve this is by... Okay, like usually after you finish three camps look at each lane wave um if you watch the previous videos i'm sure you guys have um you guys should know about level one so i'm not gonna explain that but this way you can track better look at waves if you don't know where enemy drone is and ping or laner skin their face toward this is really important because let's say you don't know where it is actually at all which let's say you were out piloting just look at the waves think about where it might be and just ping lanes play safe and put a ward down this is like so, so important. And honestly, if you are doing these things consistently, and of course, like level one wards, but already in my previous video already covered this, most of the times you'll be able to predict enemy jungler and it's actually not that hard to be aware of where he can be. So if you apply these concepts in your own games, you will be able to find him and it'll be a lot easier. And even in my games, you saw, right? On 220 like here, I went for a mid lane gank and even though I see Rex on the ward, I actually didn't ping my top laner. Because, well, guess what? After three camps, I made the mistake of not looking at waves. I was probably just locked camera, full clearing here. Like, I have the information now. The Rex is probably going to path towards top side. So now if I check my lanes, top lane, slow push, mid lane, fine. Bot lane was fine. Now I would ping one careful here and one pair careful in his face. And then I would ping Rex side as well. And this guy would never die. Okay, so... That basically covers the jungle tracking. This is really key, by the way. Really fucking key for you to master. And understanding these things will help you a lot. And be consistent with it. Try to apply this in your own games. And do it consistently. And make sure to track it using my Google Doc Sheets, okay? And see how we do it. Yeah, basically that's all. And make sure to tune in on the next week one. Which is going to be regarding when to farm and when to gank, basically. A little short video. But I hope you guys learned a lot of this one. And peace.